Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot, How Doers Get More Done. This week, we share with you a few tips on how to maintain composite decking. Yes, it seems like there's no maintenance involved, but a little bit goes a long way. Also, how to get your garage organized. Got some great tips for you on that. Revitalizing old ceramic tile, basement waterproofing, also looking at some of the causes of mold both inside and outside your home and how you can prevent it and do you have vinyl siding and are you struggling on keeping it clean? We've got some great tips for you on that as well. And of course, a simple solution. I've got a tip on how you can use leftover tile. You know, typically when you have a tiling project, there are always a few tiles left over, but how to use those tiles to make trivets to protect the surfaces of the tables in your house. All right. That's going to keep you around to listen to the podcast. So let's get started. Right now we're going to Illinois and we're going to talk with Marsha. Marsha, welcome to the show and tell us all about your deck. Thank you. Um, Well, I have a pretty big AZEC deck that we um, installed about eight or nine years ago. And there it's on three levels, and on each level there I have a rug. And the, it's changed color, and we had the AZEC people out. They said it's oxidation. Mm-hmm. That we have oxidation on the deck. But they don't have a solution as far as how to get that off of the deck. Do you have anything that might help? Well, there are, there's a lot of people that have experienced that, and um, because uh, they they do, you know, the whole composite um, category kind of portrays it as almost maintenance free, you know, and it just is going to look the same. But of course, when you're out in the elements and all the things that Mother Nature throws at a deck surface, especially it being flat, um, does uh, cause a few problems. There. By the way, you sent the pictures in, and your 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 deck looks pretty good there. But I I, I know that you're having some problems, Joe. What do you think on the um, the oxidation like that, that's one of those inevitable things. Any way that uh, she can improve the look of it a little bit? Yeah, Marsha, do you have um, um, a power washer or access to a power we washer? We do. Oh, great. Um, we do, but they told us not to use a power washer on this deck. Well, I would, you know, you said the, the AZEC people came out. Now, this is someone who built the deck? No, this is from the company. And they said not to not to use one. Okay, because ordinarily you can use if you're careful, you can use a power washer on a composite deck. Now, an AZEC deck isn't isn't technically um, composite; it's PVC, right. it's cellular PVC, so it's a little different. Well, at least with a composite deck, I know you can use a pressure washer as long as you don't have um, the pressure cranked up higher than about three thousand psi, and you use a fan, a wide fan spray attachment. But and what that okay. does is it allows you to get all the dirt off first, and with a soap, put soap in the reservoir and spray it out. Because that's the first step is to clean it. Yeah. So you'd have to if you don't want to use a power washer, that's fine. You have a big deck, so it'll take a little while. But get a stiff bristle brush and some hot water and just some soap and even just liquid dish soap and scrub it. Get it as clean as you can. Get everything off it, and then they do make. Um, a composite deck cleaner you can use on AZEC. It's called the company is called Defy, and it, there's one that has an oxygenated bleach in it, and it's not chlorine ble- bleach. It's an oxygen bleach, so it's not going to stain your clothing or harm plants or anything like that. Okay. Um, and it's about twenty four dollars for two and a half pounds of it, and then you mix it, and it makes up about five gallons of water, five gallons of cleaner rather when you mix it. So it's it's a concentrate. Okay. So I would try that now. Before I would use this, um, I would I would check with um, AZEC. You can go online or check with these the folks you spoke with earlier to make sure you can use an oxygenated bleach on it. I'm not sure why you couldn't, um, but that would be the best way to, to get the oxidation off and kill any mold or mildew or something like that because that's specifically designed for composite deck. So would that be applied um, with a brush as well? The the cleaner you'd scrub. No, the defy. The cleaner I get, I would I would either have to do a, a pressure washer or use a stiff bristle brush. Right. But once it's clean and you use the Defy after it's clean, right? Right. You could scrub it on. The, the Defy, you would just scrub on okay. and then rinse it off. Okay. You might find just cleaning it would it look fine, but I would go over it with the oxygenated bleach. Okay. We will check with that. And where do you, do you have a 
source for that? Is that a Home Depot product? Or Yeah, I think they do carry. I don't know if they carry. Okay. Defy makes several products, and they make a couple of different composite deck cleaners. I always recommend the one with oxygenated bleach. And if they don't have it, okay. but they carry Defy products, they can order it for you. Okay. And that's D-E-F-Y. Correct. Okay. We're certainly going to give that a try. All right, Marshall. Let us know how it works out. Best of luck on it. Yeah, let us know how it is. Okay, have a great summer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right now, let's head to Alabama for Reed is on the line to uh, ask us a question about some tiles. Reed, welcome to the show. Hey, Danny. Thanks for having me, and uh, I love the show. Good, good, good. I, I appreciate that, and uh, hopefully we can solve uh, any question that you have there. Tell us about this tile floor and what's going on. Uh, um, I did I did see some pictures. Yeah, so I have a, some old ceramic tile. I think it's ceramic uh, on my front porch. It's kind of faded in color. I'm kind of looking to give it that wet look to bring the color back to life. Uh, I was wondering if you have any ideas on how to get it back. Oh, we've got the expert on here. Joe Truini has written a fantastic ceramic tile book. And Joe, I know, um, you know, when you when that that finish kind of loses a little bit of its shine, it can look very dull and maybe harder to keep clean. Um, what would you recommend to read here as far as being able to that the wet look? And of course, there's a lot of sealers that are available out there, but you have to be careful on which one and how you use them. Okay, Reed, the first question is, I did see those photographs, and thanks for sending them. Are you sure that's a ceramic tile floor? It almost looks like linoleum or something. I don't even see grout joints between the tiles. Um, it's, uh, there may not be any grout joints, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely tile. It's not linoleum. Okay. All right, good. Well, that's, that makes it easier because because they're pretty um, durable, and you can you know really scrub them if you need to. Um well, there are lots of different tile. You can certainly buy a, a tile cleaner, you know, a concentrate and mix it. Um, if you want to do, make try a homemade one to clean it, um, you can just mix and get a bucket of hot water, put in some lemon juice, some ammonia, and then just scrub it with a stiff bristle brush. Um, but you may eventually, and might you want to just skip to this, you may eventually have to rent a floor polisher that will that, that you can use on tile, and um, and that. You know, when, in very short order, you'd get it as clean as you could possibly get it. You tell the rental um, dealer what you're using it for, and he'd recommend the correct abrasive or the correct pad and the polishing compound or abrasive that you might need. Since this is a glazed tile, you can be a little more agra- aggressive, right, than you could be with vinyl or with wood, certainly, um, because you're not going to really damage it. You'd have to go out of your way to damage it. Um, so I, I would try just cleaning it with uh, either a commercially made tile cleaner um, or homemade cleaner and then if you nece- if necessary then you can always get a polisher okay good deal thank you all right and check try that out and if it does work let us know we always like to know what's working as we suggest ideas so we can share those ideas with other listeners yeah i will i'll give that a shot all right reed thanks so much for being a part of the show and hope you have a great weekend all right thanks y'all too <laughs> okay all right our pleasure you don't, you don't have to see tile floors without grout joints but i guess that's one way to avoid dirty grout joints just don't yeah. put them in yeah just put them in to get together like that. i've <laughs> yeah. seen that a little bit here and there but oh have most, you oh, okay. yeah but not very often you know a lot, yeah. a lot of times it has just real small ones you know 16th yeah. of an inch and it just kind of blends in with everything diy means sawdust work gloves and the right tools but at the home depot the right tools means more than hammers and saws it means a mobile app with built-in image search that's a tool access an entire rental department with a swipe that's another tool for any project start to finish this isn't just diy this is doing like never before this is the home depot how doers get more done download our mobile app to get started Right now, we want to go right to Louisiana. Barbara's on the line. Barbara, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Danny. It's delightful to talk to you. Well, I appreciate that. I hope we can solve this problem here. A little, I hear a little frustration in this uh, in the notes I have here about your call. So uh, go through it. Tell us all about the problems you're having. Well, I have a house that uh, was built three and a half years ago, and it it really is a remodel. I had an older little bitty house that I added a significant addition to. Uh And I've only just noticed some mold, um, maybe a half an inch or so beyond the air conditioning duct vent. And I, so I went around and I actually have it showing up on four of the vents. And I've had the AC guy come in and his theory is that 
there's insulation around the boots that go from the ducts to that vent, and it's blown-in insulation, not the insulation that came from the manufacturer of the boot. And that is uh, something to do with dew point, humidity, whatever. So he pushed that insulation away, and the idea is I won't get condensation anymore on the boots to drip down and contaminate the sheetrock. I just, I, I really don't know if that's an answer because I think of a glass of ice water and it's 80 degrees and another glass and it's 95 degrees and the hotter the attic gets to I me, mean, you would get more condensation, but that's what he wants. He he says the white metal roof is reflecting too much heat off and it's not hot enough in my attic. So his other thing, besides moving the insulation, is to cover up the three gable vents I have and the perforated soffit. Um, huh. And and I, I mean, I, I went with him up into the um, attic access over the front porch, and it turns out not only do I have mold on the bottom, you know, ceiling of the porch, which is center match pine, painted white. But from that attic door access, I was looking at the top of those uh, boards, and lo and behold, there's more mildew up there. So I'm more than frustrated. I'm I'm heart sick because it's a new new home. Well, I think, um, you know, hate to say anything negative about anybody, but I do think maybe he stayed in the attic a little too long because uh, <laughs> the, the, the heat may have gotten to his common sense because uh, – uh, I'll tell you what he's saying is not true, and let me explain why. You're exactly right on your analogy of the condensation um, and on a glass, and the same thing with the boot or the outlet for the air conditioning where it seats down through the um, through your ceiling. Because if it's not insulated properly, then you have the influence of the heat in the attic and the cold air blowing through it. So it, it the insulation does not need to be pulled away. It needs to be packed against it even more. Better would be a duct um, insulation that's a thin insulation with a foil backing that would go around that. And even caulking right where it goes through the ceiling, that will prevent that condensation from happening. Believe me, I've done that a uh, hundred times and that's the only way to correct that but now one of the big other problems that's happening is you have too much moisture in your in your attic and your attic is not ventilated properly now the last thing you want to do is to remove any type of soffit vents or close close off any gables because then you're trapping the moisture and the problem will get get 10 times worse than it is now. So ventilation is needed, pulling insulation away from the soffit vents to make sure they're not blocked, and then to add a power roof ventilator, thermostatically controlled, to really kick kick that in a little bit, to really pull that air, that that um, nice fresh air down below and exhaust that hot moist air, probably will solve the problem. So um, the gentleman's just not understanding the right way of conceiving that because moisture is what's causing the condensation along with the heat, and moisture is what is causing the mold and mildew problem. You got to get that mo- that that moisture out of the attic, and the problem will go away. An electronic electrical vent system. Yeah, it's just a it's just a stand an, an attic exhaust fan, and it just has a thermostat that kicks it on when it gets up to a certain. Uh, temperature. Rather than punching through the metal roof, is it possible to get something that would be near those gable vents? You can put one and mount it right on the gable itself. You'd only need one oh. and mount it right on the other thing. So another thing I thought about on this, Barbara, when you're talking about that it was an, a, a large renovation, you know, that you enlarged an existing home. Unfortunately, a lot of times guys that are doing that type of work are not combining those attic spaces. You can have an original attic space from your house and then what's built. And so if if that if those areas have not been combined, you can have heat pockets and moisture pockets within that attic space, and you definitely don't want that at all. I understand, but it, it, that's not a problem here. The, the old, old attic is open to the new. Um, I did have a question also on the, the little bit of mold and mildew around those vents. Should that sheetrock be cut out and replaced? 
Uh, I, yeah, I, I doubt it. You, normally, it's not um, so bad that it does require that. Um, I would just use um, a little bit of uh, oxygen bleach and a and a um, rag just to kind of dab it a little mm-hmm. bit to clean it. And then if mm-hmm. it's still discolored, then use a, a spray and um, a, a stain blocking spray that you can spray around it. And that's probably all that'll be needed. Sometimes you have to touch up the paint, but um, but many times it batches well enough that you don't have that problem. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, Barbara, I hope this helps you out and everything, but you do you do need to get that moisture out of the attic, and it needs to happen, you know, the, the whole entire time uh, to make sure all, all year long. Some people say it's only something that they do during the summer, but it really needs to be done all the time. So, Barbara, thanks so much for being with us, and uh, uh, get on that so that you don't have to worry about all that mold and mildew again. We hear You hear, it, you hear us talk about it all the time, Joe. Um, uh, people give an advice sometimes, I mean, you know, Everybody has an opinion, yep. but I really hate to see someone that just has no idea what they're talking about giving somebody an opinion like that. Yeah, especially something like this. I mean, we know from a fact that mold grows on ductwork and anywhere else and when two things are present, right? Moisture and hot or warm temperatures. So, and that's obviously going to happen in Louisiana. Um, and these conditions, mold growth on ducts and can also be caused by if your air conditioning unit is oversized, she has a brand new addition, maybe they put in a unit that's too big. Some people think, well, bigger is better. Well, not with air conditioners because larger units can cool the space so quickly and then turn off before they get a chance to dehumidify the air. So that leads to excessive moisture. And if you keep it on a too low a temperature, it can cause this by the cool, the cool air hits the vents, which are warmer and condenses. Or, of course, we talk all the time about ducts that have leaks in it. It allows warm air to get into the duct and, you know, again, it can lead, eventually lead to condensation and then mold. So, yeah, getting rid of the moisture in the air and uh, and balancing that temperature will go a long way to solving this problem. Time for our Home Depot Best New Product of the Week, How Doers Get More Done. If your bathroom vent fan sounds like a helicopter taking off or simply really doesn't do its job, it's time for a replacement. Now, unfortunately, replacing a vent fan can often be a really big hassle. That's why Revent designed their new easy installation bath exhaust fan with Sheetlock. Now, Sheetlock is the system that allows you to install this fan directly to the sheetrock in half the time without any screws or nails. It also includes adjustable three-level LED lighting which is sufficient to use as the main light source for the small bathrooms. The designer shield adds a modern look, which is both paintable and easy to clean. Plus, this fan is extremely quiet at only 0.8 zones. So for more information on this Revent Easy Installation Bath Exhaust Fan, just log on to homedepot.com. Right now, we're going to go to the Today's Homeowner Hotline, which you can call us at any time, 800 946 4420. Steve is on the line. Steve, tell us all about this vinyl siding issue. Hi, Danny. I have a older trailer with uh, vinyl siding on it, kind of a light sand color. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's in a lot with partial to mostly shade from oak trees. And uh, I pressure washed it last year, but now the brown stain from the oak trees has came back just as bad as before. And I'm wondering if, you know, because the siding is faded, it's not chalky or deteriorated, but seems to hold that stain. And if there's any way I can spray on some kind of sealer or protectant uh, to make it easier to keep clean, uh, I really don't want to paint because the pressure washer may take it off. Right. Mm -hmm. And my wife said cutting down the trees is not an option. I still want to eat regularly. There you go. I don't, yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to cross her up on that. You well, a couple of suggestions. Um, certainly, trimming a few of the limbs to allow more of the sun to get to the vinyl siding will help um, keep that a little bit cleaner. But I'll tell you something, Steve. We did a few years ago uh, that was a uh, very interesting, and it did work very well. And it's going to sound a little strange, but what we did is we used uh, trisodium phosphate to clean the vinyl siding. Then, after it was dry, we actually applied Armorall, just like you put on the dash of your car. 
and it, you know, you, you know how the dash of your car can look just terrible, and then with just minutes of putting a little bit of armor all on it, it um, kind of like moisturizes it and revitalizes it a good bit. And the exa- and we were actually doing this on some vinyl shutters that had oxidized and looked terrible, and within just minutes they looked brand new. Now, the protective aspect of that, I would guess, by in the same way that it protects your um, your your dashboard, it would uh, afford some of that. A little bit of labor intensive to install it, but it you know one bottle of that goes a long way, and that's one suggestion. Joe, do you have another suggestion uh, for Steve on his vinyl siding? Yeah, Steve, what I would suggest is try what Danny just suggested, but if it doesn't work, if you want to try something else, they do make a, prof- a professional-grade cleaner specifically made for vinyl siding, and it's called Vinyl Renew, and Renew is spelled R-E-N-U, Vinyl Renew, um, and it it removes oxidation, mold, algae, uh, stains from bugs and leaves and trees, I suspect, as well. Um, it's It's... I've used it just once or twice, and it hasn't, and it's been a while. But it works when nothing else will work. It um, it's pretty affordable. I think they it's like twenty five cents per square foot to clean a surface, so that's pretty affordable. And it's supposed to last eight to ten years, which I'm, I'm you know I'm a little skeptical skeptical of that, but that's what they say, eight to ten years. Now that's all great news, right? It's a two part kit. Comes with a cleaner. They clean the surface, then has a restorer, which which will seal the surface a little bit. That's all good news. Steve, the bad news is it's $120. But mm, if you can yeah. get eight or if you can get eight or ten years out of it, then you know, it's probably worth it. So I would at least check that out. It's called vinyl again, it's called vinyl renew professional grade cleaner. And it's made just for this just just for the problem you have. Right. Is that applied by hand or I think if I remember correctly, you brush it, let me see. You the restorer you use you can either spray it on or you can use a brush. Um, the yeah. cleaner I think you just scrub on. Again, it has the two parts as the cleaner and and there's a, these are concentrates. The cleaner you can scrub on, then rinse it off, and then you can use either a, an airless sprayer or a brush. I suppose you could probably roll it on. I'm not sure why if you could brush it, you could probably roll it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'd you'd have to read the direction. If you went online and looked up this product, I'm sure they have all the specs regarding how to properly use it and apply it to the siding. Okay. Well, see, I'm an old guy. I'm almost 75, and my wife really doesn't want me on a ladder. But Yeah, I saw the photographs. Yeah, you might not need to get on the ladder. I I think Dennis, our engineer, might have a suggestion. Yeah, I'm just looking at the website for Vinyl Renew. Yeah. And apparently, if you go there, Steve, you can see that they'll send you a free sample. Oh. Okay. Great. So check that out. We'll all order a free sample and send it to Steve. Maybe he ends up with enough to do the whole house. That's right. <laughs> well, Steve, I would give that a try. And it's certainly, a, you know, if it's something designed for that, you can try the Armor All, too. That's very inexpensive at the auto parts store. Yeah. And uh, let us know if, uh, if what works best for you, because I'm sure a lot of people are listening right now that have the exact same problem. Okay. I sure will. Uh, I just wanted to say one thing, though. Thank you for having a real home improvement show. Not like some of the ones where, you know, they have uh, contractors come in and remodel the whole place. You know, this is small stuff that we do all the time, you know. I appreciate that. And that's exactly what we try to do. We want to keep it very realistic, very practical, and and do it uh, do the projects just like we would do in a normal real-life situation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, our pleasure, Steve. Thanks so much, and best of luck on the siding there. And uh, if we can help you again, just let us know, and have a great weekend. Okay. To show our appreciation, I think I'm going to volunteer to send Dennis up to Steve's house and help him clean that siding. I think that would be good. De- Dennis is a pretty- I'll do it. He sounds like a great guy. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds great. Hey, we want to grab one of the emails here. You can send us one at todayshomeowner.com slash ask. This one is from Will in Delaware. Our driveway has several long cracks in it. I've tried to fill it up, but nothing seems to last more than a few months before it cracks and peels out. How can I seal these so that I don't have to keep doing the same repair? Well, uh, Will, the first thing you need to do in, in, to make sure you get a lasting repair in a concrete crack is clean out the crack to remove any broken concrete or debris. That stuff is going to keep any of the repair material from sticking to the walls of the crack. 
Yeah, the most important part, Danny, before you repair it is to clean up that, that crack of all the debris. And you can scrape it out with a putty knife or a slotted screwdriver, that works. And then get out your shop vacuum. That's the best way to get out all that, the little bits of dust and dirt and get it as clean as possible before you move on to the next step. And the repair caulk that I like is a Quick Creek's Advanced Polymer Concrete Crack Sealant because it's much more durable than traditional polyurethane or silicone sealants. That's because it does remain flexible once it dries, so it's a lot less likely to crack. Yeah, you want you want a sealant that is flexible, right? Because if it's really rigid, it's going to crack. So this will give a little bit. And this particular product, Danny, is also textured, so it has a little bit of grit in it, and it, so it blends in really well with the with the surrounding texture of the concrete. And it comes in a 10-ounce uh, caulk tube and so easy to use and to be able to repair those cracks for good. And you can find out about a whole line of QuickCrete's advanced polymer sealants and adhesives by simply going to QuickCrete.com. That's products that we all have used many times. It works very, very well. All right, Danny, I had finished a tiling project not too long ago. And of course, I had several tiles left over because you always buy a few extra in case something happens, you miss cut one or break one or whatever. So I thought, okay, so what am I going to do with these tiles? I don't need all of them. So I thought it'd be a great uh, simple solution to turn them into trivets to protect, you know, like dining room tables or countertops or anything like that. So here's what you do. But if you just take the tile and just put it on the on the surface, the underside of the tile, of course, is kind of rough and you can scratch it, especially if someone slides it, you can scratch it. So you have to make um, some kind of pad. And rather than buying furniture, little stick on glides, I decided to make my own with some silicone. So here's what you do. Start by spraying a light coating of cooking oil onto a piece of wax paper, then lay two paint sticks, or I actually use tongue depressors across the wax paper. And they're just they're going to create the spacers for these little pads you're going to make. Next, use a hot melt glue gun. You can use silicone or hot melt glue and put a half inch diameter dab of hot melt glue on each back corner of the tile. So four dabs and immediately press it down onto the wooden sticks. You don't want the sticks hitting the glue, of course. You just want it to go against. That's the reason you spray the oil on the wax paper so that the, um, the glue doesn't stick to the wax paper. But in any case, you press it down and you wind up with, in each corner, a little hot melt glue soft pad the thickness of the tongue depressor or the paint stick, whatever you use. So you just let it harden for a few minutes, peel off the wax paper, and there you go. Oh, that's a great idea. You got this trivet with these little stick-on pads made out of hot melt glue. And you think about it this time of the year, um, you know, a lot of uh, outside entertaining taking place, and you yep. have your tables out there. You don't want to burn with any of those hamburgers bringing off the grill. So that's a that's yeah. a really good one. And and um, this is what we do every week. Joe shares with us every hour another simple solution. But you don't have to wait for that. You can go to todayshomeowner.com slash simple solutions and see over 500 of these. Now it's time for our podcast question of the week. This comes from Rachel in Alabama. My question is, how often should I flush or drain my electric water heater for preventative maintenance? Taking care of my home is a never-ending process as a single woman. Watching today's homeowner television show has been a part of my life for over a decade. Well, that's very sweet. And I always learn something new. I've truly enjoyed the projects that you share each week. I've mastered a few things with your help and my power tools. Right now, I'm actually saving for a miter saw. Got to have goals, right? <laughs> <laughs> Many thanks for all that y'all do. Well, we appreciate that, Rachel. And oh, that's great. Um, certainly, your question about um, the water heater is one that um, it's a chore that a lot of people just don't tackle, but it is very important for a lot of reasons. First of all, the very first time you do it, you'll realize how beneficial it is because there's some strange stuff that'll come out of that water heater when you drain it. And of course, it's like maintaining an air conditioning system that if it's uh, maintained on a regular basis, it'll work more efficient, efficiently and last a lot longer. And Joe, that goes for whether it's electric or um, gas, doesn't really matter. It can certainly benefit from uh, this simple little chore. Yeah. And the reason you want to do it is mostly just to remove all the sediment that or buildup that collects at the bottom of the tank. Um, and most manufacturers recommend um, flushing it out, flushing out the water heater six to 12 months. If you have extremely hard water, you probably should do it more often because, of course, you're collecting more hard water deposits in it. But I think six to 12 months, Danny, um, in your experience, is that often enough, you think? Yeah, I think if you can at least do it once a year, you're really doing it um, a lot more than most people do. And, right. and I'll tell you what, we have step-by-step -step instructions and videos 
at todayshomeowner.com right now. Just put in the search engine, drain in your water heater, and you'll be guided right through the process, whether it's gas or electric. And I'd mentioned that if you have hard water, you should flush it more often. And I had written a, a little piece on hard water recently, and 85% of the country has hard water, which wow. was surprising to me. I, I probably would have guessed less than 50, but 85%. Huh. And then I wanted to share a simple solution on how you can test a very rudimentary test for hard water. Um, you take a clean 16-ounce water bottle, mm-hmm. add about a half a cup of tap water right out of your sink, then add 10 drops of liquid dish soap. Tighten mm. up the cap and shake it really well for a good 30 seconds, a full 30 seconds. If you notice a thick head of lather forming on the top of the water, then the water is probably not hard. However, mm. if the water turns cloudy and you have very little lather, then it probably has elevated mineral levels, in which case you should have it um, professionally tested and you probably will find you do have um, hard water. So that's just a quick little test. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Then you can explore some of the ways of of um, correcting that in filters and so forth. Sure. That's good. Yep. That's great. Yeah. So water softener is usually easy, the, the most common way of eliminating hard water. Yeah. So if you have a question for us uh, that you'd like for us to answer here on the Today's Homeowner podcast, just reach out to us, todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. And always thank you so much for the taking the time to leave us those wonderful reviews that we read each and every week. We appreciate every one of them. And thanks so much for being with us here on this Today's Homeowner podcast. I'm Danny Lippert, along with my buddy Joe Truy. We'll see you soon.